Okay, welcome back to another episode. We were sent in um, this dilemma and yeah, the girl basically asked for our advice. Hello girls, I've been a long time fan of your podcast and most of your opinions and advice has helped me a lot while navigating my 20s and this is why I thought you'd be the best group to turn to for some advice regarding my current situation. That is very lovely. <laughs> this is very, very lovely. I'm Honestly. touched. I'm, I'm just tired. I'm touched. Oh, really. that's so nice. Real. Hi. Um, Hello, friend. friend. <laughs> I won't say your name just in case yeah, you don't real. want me to. Yeah. Um, so I plan on moving in with my white boyfriend and I don't know how to tell oh. my... I don't know how to tell my African mother. Oh! <laughs> oh, we're going there now. <laughs> you didn't even... <laughs> Wade in the water. Wade in the water. What kind of room? I don't even know what this has to do with anything. I don't know. You know how sometimes you just... <laughs> what do you do with race? <laughs> so do with race and then like just equality and just... <laughs> togetherness. <What>? Anyway. <laughs> Isn't it a slavery song? Yeah, no. No, it's Mary Mary. No, no. I know that one, but as in like the... No, but originally how it's normally the used. The way that it's do. used. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Shaft. I don't yeah. know. I know why we went there, but we went there, Chad. For real. When the um, Holy leads. Also, I have to apologize about my reading just because my contact lenses are acting up a bit. But anyway, going to try. I'm 24 years old and I've been dating my boyfriend for almost two years. We decided to take the next step and move in together. It also felt like the logical thing to do since I'll be resuming uni lectures and looking for a part-time job in the city when we plan to, uh, in the city we plan to move to. My relationship with my mum is nice, but at times toxic. Mm. So I would have eventually moved out even if my boyfriend wasn't in the picture. Okay. Mm-hmm. In addition, my mum is a single mother of three and she depends on my sister and I to help her out with rent. And on me to drive her around when needed. That's why I decided not to move too far in case she needs me to drive her to certain places. Very thoughtful. Very nice. But knowing her, she will probably seize the car from me. I didn't read this far, child. Hold on. (laughs) Hold on. I didn't didn't read this far, child. Ah, is it your car. car or hers? How can she seize it? Uh, you know, her African person doesn't matter whether you're on it or not. Whether, whether, whether they drive manual you or not. Submit your phone at 10 p.m. Literally. literally. Submit your phone. Yeah, yeah, legit. Damn. However, I still feel guilty for the rent, even though, even when knowing my sister will, even when knowing my sister will be able to cover for it. Did you guys get that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, to cut this short, since all African parents are traditional, ah. My boyfriend and I decided to get engaged in quotation marks, um, okay. and then let our parents oh, like, meet. They're not actually engaged, engaged, but they're just saying that they're engaged. Oh, well, mm. I'm just reading it as mm. I yeah. as it's written, but yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, and then let our parents meet before announcing to her our intention to move in together. Mm. But I know she might still refuse to accept my decision and most probably disown me for it. Mm? But I have oh, made up my mind. This. Oh, we need to speak on this, child. We need I guess my purpose this. of writing this post is to know your opinions on the matter. Since you are all more likely to understand what it's like to have an Afri- to have African parents and get where I'm coming from. P.S. We do have plans to get married in the nearest future, but we both don't think now is the right time. Thank you, and I really hope to hear from you girls soon. Oh, mm. first of all, I really appreciate yes. it. Yes, and I responded to her email and I yeah. told her that we would discuss it, but it wouldn't come out for another few weeks. But, yeah, um, and she replied. Interesting. Yes, Thank you, first of all, yeah. for trusting us with this. Like, wow. Yeah, for real. Um. First of all, um, not to take away from your situation, but there's actually another uh, kind of thing we were discussing. Remember in our group chat about something quite similar where the man has basically come out and said that he's married Mm. um, his wife and his parents basically didn't approve. And he, um, yeah, essentially they didn't attend the wedding like that extreme. Um, They did attend the wedding and they're still not And they're still not going to contact. Yeah, they're still not in contact about it. I I think the first thing that I will say is that can we break this up? Sorry. Go on. Like in terms of I was gonna say, like, let's just address like different topics at different stages. I don't know how you're about to do it. But I was gonna say, first of all, in terms of like moving in with her boyfriend, like what do you think about that before we get onto like the way the mum will react? Like, what would your if you heard I was like planning to move in with my boyfriend of two years, like what advice would you give me? I don't really know if I don't know if there's much to it, man. If you guys both decide that you want to move into with each other, you want to I move think in. probably wait till you finish uni. Because she said that oh, she's, she's in uni. She said that she's in uni. Oh, so I, I would see. say wait till 
um, you finish and you know that you've closed that chapter before you open up another chapter. Because I can't lie, you know when you're in uni and you're sharing with people, even though this is, you're sharing with your boyfriend, mm. when you're under that uni stress, mm. you'll be going to lecture, coming back, you'll be seen playing the thing, you just get angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of like, I think, first of all, maybe you should finish uni before you decide to open up that chapter. Know that, you've, that you're done with uni and then, when you're when you want to move with your boyfriend, maybe you're starting your career. I don't know what else you want to do. But I think finish uni before you move in. Mm. But I guess at the same time, I'm trying to think. I don't know whether your home situation is quote unquote toxic, and mm. you want to get out of that situation. So because she said that she would have moved that anyway, even mm. if even if she wasn't moving in with her boyfriend, she would have mm-hmm. moved yeah. that because of that relationship. Yeah, so. but I'm just I'm just saying what I, what yeah. I would do basically. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think you really just have to chance it. You have to think about yourself and think about, you know, finances and things like that. But mm. if you feel like the best thing for you to do now is move out, then then do it. But I would mm. suggest wait until you finish uni. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm always funny about these situations because obviously you're coming from your from your family home, right? So you still haven't uh lived that independence life. And for me, I'm like, I'm always uh an advocate for having time living by yourself to just find out more about who you are as a person outside your family home. That's where I disagree slightly with the normal tradition in terms of where you leave your family home and you go in with your marriage, like you go into your marital home. I do feel like there is value in having time by yourself to just really like understand who you are. But I'm also aware that financially not everybody is able to do that would you say that is based on age as well depending on if you get married quite young maybe you just don't have the time frame to actually live by yourself yeah definitely but then i would say you know i always say kind of what's the rush in those situations especially if okay, true. especially if you don't know much about yourself like i don't know people are different maybe maybe in your family home you're actually quite independent you do a lot of the things anyway so you you're used to it mm. but for me anyway i know that in my family home like i rely on my even though you know, you're not, you don't always agree with your parents and stuff, but like I rely on my parents a lot to like help me in different scenarios, different situations. So like I value, like I value that time very, very highly. Um, but I also like I I do feel like there's also a value in moving in or experiencing your partner in certain lights before making the full term mm-hmm. commitment. Yeah. And I know again, it goes against the normal traditional values, but there. Bro, sometimes you just need, even if you haven't been, especially if you haven't been like holidays, if you haven't done that, like mm-hmm. you need some sort of experience to understand how that person is in those yeah. environments. Yeah. And as long as you are aware that you moving in could either make or break the relationship yeah. and you are okay to basically do your own thing if it doesn't work out Mm. I think you're fine I think it's where people go into that situation being very naive like it's going to be all hunky-dory and we're going to make it that's where I would say that's where that the stupidity or like you know I mean like just not being cautious is not yeah don't be put into place you've got to be nice you've got to be aware that bro yeah people that do that and then they end up that's why I was moving out that's why I was saying the thing of finishing uni because that is also added on more stress yeah, to, for real. to whatever situ- whatever like moving in situation. Like yeah. once you finish uni, at least you know that that one is closed, that like, you don't have to think about opening any book anymore. Yeah. That like, you're just thinking about your career because yeah. can't lie, imagine yeah. uni, then you uni, can't yeah, like, nah, nah, yeah. nah. I couldn't mm. imagine sharing, like even just like in uni where in the UK, I don't know if you're where you're, where you're from, but like in the UK, for example, where we have like housemates and all that sort of thing. I couldn't imagine even my housemate being my boyfriend. Like I think that environment would be quite, it'd be a bit much. Overbearing. It'd be a bit, yeah, a bit. You yeah. need your time where you could be like, you know, in a relationship, you also need some time to yourself, especially you like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was going to say, um, if your intention for moving out is to basically relieve yourself of this toxic environment that you have with your mum, I would suggest that you live by yourself if you can afford to do so. Or with a friend. Or with a friend. I wouldn't suggest that you live with your boyfriend. I feel like, again, I don't know you guys' relationships. I don't know you personally. But I think like the girls are saying, it would be good to have some time where 
you can test what it would be like to live with him without having to actually live, live with him. Mm. And you can do that when you move out because then you can have him stay over for like yeah, a week, a two day, weeks yeah. or sleepovers. Just test it first mm. and get through the like... The rough stage of that. Yeah, the like annoying stuff where in the beginning, right, everyone is perfect. Like even like when you go on like a holiday with your friend, mm. if you go on holiday with your friend for two, three nights, it's fine. Mm. When you go on holiday with your friend for like two weeks, then you deep like, okay, like, you know, can you lay the bed please? Or mm. you, do, 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 do you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Yeah. Mm. Um, so I, I think it's always best to like just test it first before you commit to it. Um, just because it seems like obviously two years is a is a good amount of time to have been in a relationship, but it's still like the early it's the early part of your relationship considering that you're 24 and obviously by God's mm. grace you will live a long life. So I would say don't rush, especially if you think that that is going to really piss your mum off. Like mm. I would say if it's already toxic and you know that this is going to add fuel to the fire, like maybe just ease her into the process mm. of like you that. moving out and then moving just... out, moving in with your boyfriend, like being engaged. Like it's, it's, it's a lot to like, we have to give her some grace as well. Like yeah. it's a lot to like, uh, what's it, swallow? Is that what mm, they say? Yeah. Mm. Um, so I would say, yeah, if if you're able, live by yourself or live with your, if a friend first, if you can do that. Um, that I would was, be my suggestion in I the first instance. I was also going to say, the fact that you described the race of your boyfriend is now ringing alarm bells in my head because I'm thinking does the mom have a problem with the fact that the boyfriend is white? Is white? Mm. Because normally you just be like, oh, I'm moving in with my boyfriend. But you said, I'm African and I'm moving in yeah, with my yeah. white boyfriend. Yeah. Mm. I'm I think just that thinking is definitely that's part of probably it. part sentence. of it as well. And I know in some cases, I don't know about you guys, but I know when it comes to my parents, my parents ideally, well, let me just talk about, about my dad. My dad would ideally want me to be with um, a Nigerian man. Mm. Ideally. Yoruba. Mm. And obviously, if I bring home someone else, it's going to take a, a, a bit getting used to, mm. but they'll love whoever I love mm. by God's grace. Mm. But I'm just saying like, if already there's that kind of friction with with the, with your mum maybe not really accepting your white boyfriend, if you now go and move out with the white boyfriend again, yeah. it might now just add a I bit of gonna... strain on your relationship with your mum. Because I she did say that her relationship with her mum is okay mm. at some time and stuff mm. like that. I'm just thinking maybe... Yeah, I, I don't know, think tread I... A bit ca- I don't know, tread a bit carefully. And mm. the fact that the relationship, not that it's new because you guys have still been together for two years, but mm. in mm. the retrospect of, like you said, mm. you wanting to be together forever, two years is very, very little. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know whether there's a way that you can make your mum feel a little bit more comfortable with the boyfriend before you now say yeah. that Especially you're engaged, if she hasn't met moving him out. Yet. And, oh, has she not met him? I don't, I don't actually know. I think she said, decide to get engaged and let our parents meet. Oh, okay, let our parents meet. I don't know if she's mm. met him yet, but I'm just thinking if she hasn't, then from the mum's perspective, perspective, it will be tough to be like, to learn, I have a boyfriend, he's white. I'm moving out. With, I'm moving out. I'm moving out with him. Like it's it's a lot to yeah. do. So I'd say yeah. like try and break it up a little bit by you know, and also just for yourself as well. Like it's it's even different living with another person, but then living with someone else in your own bed as well. Like that's yeah. a, that's a, like a yeah. huge adjustment. Yeah. Um, but I do think that you know you're doing the right thing at the end of the day. I know that you feel a bit guilty about like the rent and stuff, and if. Maybe if you can afford to do so, maybe you can still contribute in some sort of way to help your mum out. But genuinely, and I'm speaking from experience now as well, like moving out has done wonders for my relationship with my parents. And I think genuinely that actually when you move out, hopefully you and your mum will start to establish um, like a good relationship or a Mm. better relationship, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, people do say when they move out, they tend to talk to their parents more than when they're actually living in the house. Because I was talking to my friend last week and he was telling me exactly the same thing. I was talking to him and his mum. And they were like, oh, the relationship has definitely definitely got better Mm. since him like moving out and things Mm. like that. Mm. So I get there's, there's different ways to go about it, but I think you just need to try and find the most appropriate way for you and and, and try and chance it like mm. maybe uh, sneak ask your mum a few questions or you know bring up topics mm. so you can kind of get her her view you and scope before you. or before you come and unleash I'm moving now I'm yeah. engaged yeah. I'm going um, but I just wanted to say though because like I mentioned there was a guy um, that kind of spoke about his own situation which is very similar 
um, where it actually materialized. And I can't lie to you, when it comes to uh, parents that are willing to disown their children <laughs> mm. based on these sort of things, I am a massive believer in the fact that you you, you don't you don't live you don't live or you shouldn't make every single decision just to please other people other than yourself, especially if you're someone of faith where you use God as a reference and yeah. someone who guides you and, you know, supports you and aids you in your mm. decision making. If that is the first thing that you do and you feel at peace with the decisions you're making, everybody comes secondary to that. So the fact that you even are saying that your mum is, you know, she will disown you. First of all, actually ask yourself, is that actually a real life situation? And speak to her, like Tammy said, test, ask questions. Because sometimes, you know how sometimes people perceive in that, oh yeah, I know that if I got pregnant, my mom would be like, hey, God, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, they'll do that for five but minutes then, and then when the child yeah, comes, then my really grandson, exactly. yeah, yeah. Exactly. You hold him up like Simba. No, but literally, <laughs> literally. So actually find out whether this is actually like a core non-negotiable for her and it will actually really severely damage the relationship that you have with your mom. But like I said, if your mom is someone, and this is, you know, it might be quite harsh to hear, if your mom is someone that is willing to do that, then I can't lie, like you might need to start coming to terms no, with the fact fine. that it's a matter, yeah, matter of time. Because it might not be this situation, but it's going it to be another situation. So yeah. I just think just do what is best in, you know, for yeah. you. But especially for someone of faith, like we all are, I definitely would suggest that like, just ask God like for guidance on this situation because navigating families and all that sort of thing. And he touched on it as well. And I might actually put the link in the description bar, but he touched on it. And he basically said that like, that is like the worst feeling that he's ever felt in his life. It's like so the feeling of when your parents would disown you on that sort of, you know, hmm. uh, situation. But bro, sometimes it's got to be done where you just got to, you just got to yeah, live sometimes wise. wash your hands of it yeah. because yeah. You can't, some are, you, some the thing is are, as well, like some, I genuinely feel like sometimes people don't really understand like the weight and the importance of marriage. You mm. don't make any sort of vow to anybody else in this life yeah. in the same way that you do in marriage. Yeah? yeah. In matrimony before God and you vow to love someone till yeah. death. Yeah. So really and truly, it is so heartbreaking, like his story, honestly. Mm. Like the thought of like my if I think of like not being able to speak to my mom or like my dad or my brother, like mm. I can't even, or my, them, heart, them not my heart breaks there. thinking mm. about like, that. Them not being but, there, like one of the most yeah. pivotal moments in your That's life. Crazy. Like, yeah. it might, like every single time that you've gone through life, your parents have always been there. Yeah, Graduation. Moment, yeah. Yeah. They've all, they've, like all these key moments in your life. And just because the person that you're choosing to love isn't in their isn't eyes. In their eyes, the person that they, they feel like you, you want to be with. Mm. At the end of the day, like like I said, like that is the only vow that you make to someone, and you have to at that point, you're just like, well, this is my family now. Yeah. And yeah. which is what he kind of touched on as well. Like yeah. it's tough, but genuinely that is your family because you vowed to love this woman. And yeah, yeah so it's tough. That it's one, tough. That um, one pained me differently because you know why? It's because the one, the, the thing that he said that pained me when he said that, he said that God told him that that's his wife. Mm. But his mom said that God told me that that's not your wife. Mm. And it's kind of like, how do you even... Yeah, and that's that. the thing. How do you like even deal with that? Like I was saying in the that? chat, like, God is not a God of confusion. He's not going to tell your mom that's not his wife and then mm. tell you that's your wife. Sometimes I have to so, sit back and realise, boy, this is definitely your own thing. Just, yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, and sometimes you have to mm. start your thinking unconscious. like, Cha. Is this me talking to myself? Is my mom talking to herself? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And like Beatrice said, at the end of the day, when we come before God, like we will account for our own decisions, not mm. the decisions that our parents have made. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So really and truly, you just got to, like, like Beatrice said, if you're a person of faith, definitely pray about it. If yeah, you have people who are close to you, who know you better than we do, mm. obviously, then definitely speak to them about it as well. I don't know if you have like maybe like an older cousin or like an uncle or an auntie mm. or something that you can maybe test it with. That's like a cool, not like one of these African uncles. That's just gonna, <laughs> mm. yes, you should listen to your mother. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but I definitely you got someone think take it to can... God because honestly, he has the answer for everything. Absolutely. So like if you are religious, if you are like a Christian and believe in God or any of the beliefs that you do believe in, just take it to God and just see what he says. And I was going to say something as well. Like, um, with the whole, because she mentioned disowning as well. Mm. I'm just going to say, if you're certain that this is someone that you want to really be with, mm. you don't have to come to the terms that 
this is something that can break the relationship be- between mm. you and your mum and maybe you and your siblings because you don't know which way your siblings are going to go, whether mm. they're going to be on your side, whether they're going to be on your mum's side. So you need to know for definite that, okay, this is the person that I love, I want to be with, I'm really, I'm ready to risk it all. Mm. Ready to, you know, put my hands up and risk everything. So yeah. I yeah. don't know. It's a very tricky situation dealing with African parents. Ciao. Boy, someone can write a book about it. And then the book wouldn't even be enough because fam. it's just so It's complex. a series of books. And come, a movie will come out about one part, two part, three, don't ongoing you. parts. For real, mm. for real. And Ciao. Damn, damn it. I was going to ask you a question, yeah. Because whenever, like, I'm having discussions with, like, you know, when you have sometimes you have a discussion with your parents about, mm. like, oh, your children, like, have, have your parents ever said to you, like, oh, your children are going to be worse with how you are to them? Yeah. Because, like, some, you know, sometimes, like, you'll talk back or something and then mm. you're like, your children are going to be worse, like, yeah. like, to you. And I'm just thinking, I don't really think so because I think the difference between us and our parents is that we've experienced. Oh, Two different cultures. We've experienced yeah. Nigerian culture. We've experienced um, UK culture, mm. and we've been trying to navigate both of them. Trying to live our life. Trying to do both. Trying to do um, Hannah Montana, best of both worlds. So, so mm. I, I, I've always said this to my parents. I'm like, I don't think it's gonna. Our children are gonna be like worse or stuff like that. I know they're saying it in like jest and things like that, but I was saying like we generally have the understanding of best of both worlds. Mm. So I don't even really think. Mm. Our children will We would understand our children more than if Our parents understood Yeah If you raise children in this country then yeah, yeah exactly I feel like a lot of, Like you've just mentioned Like some of the Difficulty or the tension Between like Us and our parents Just genuinely stem from the fact that Our cultures are different Even yeah. though we're both Like we're both Nigerian obviously But when you're born and raised in Nigeria Versus when you're mm, Born in yeah. the UK And raised mm. in the UK Like it's yeah. different um, sure. So I feel like yeah, if you if we had children and we raise them in the UK, then definitely there'll be there's the the gap has been bridged in terms of like yeah. the culture and stuff. Yeah. But again, there'll be new stuff like Defo. there'll be it's stuff we don't we don't even understand. No one's like, yeah. Dad, how do you not know this? Or mom, how do you not know how this? Yeah, is? yeah. There'll be stuff like that. There'll even though we like, think that we're so techie, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of thing now, so like, there'll be different topics that yeah. we'll be thinking absolutely not. Like how could you possibly think this way? Yeah, and real. yeah, It'll be very interesting, Sha. Mm. Yeah, if we're honored and blessed to be able to su- have such a privilege. Um, but anyway, welcome back, guys. Another episode of the BTS podcast. You are joined by your lovely host, Beatrice. Tammy. And Sharon. And yeah, welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Um, it's another Monday. Hope you guys, hope you guys' week has started off well. Um, let's jump straight into Song of the Week. I don't know if you guys have songs that you want to add to the playlist. So for those that don't know, each week we add a song to our Spotify and Apple Music playlists. Um, so yeah. We can go ahead and add something now. Do you know one thing I did? I did that you double, you added a yeah, song twice. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I added. Is that song, song really twice. that good that you didn't add it twice? I, I didn't. What song <laughs> I was didn't it? Realize, oh, really, but I I'm really, you. I didn't realize I'd already said earlier that I was adding it. <laughs> I don't know why. Do you know I was what it crying. is? I just go through my liked songs every time, and I'm yeah. just I pick something from the top, boy. Yeah. Mm. Um. Okay, I'm actually gonna pick a song that. I didn't really deep it until I was in Beatrice's car and she was playing it. I said, ha! If no be you <laughs> When a ginger my body <laughs> Cool up <laughs> my body <laughs> Sweetie <laughs> my body <laughs> If no be you Ah, oh, tune! <laughs> I reloaded it in my car like 17 Don't times. Don't kill me. I think I even messaged you. Did I message I you? I don't know if you did about that one. I think I might have. I can't remember That's though. So but funny. anyway... If you haven't clocked on now, <laughs> what I'm going to be adding to the playlist is You Juju by David Doe featuring Skepta. Oh, big. Ch- it's the yeah. way it starts. If, if not, if not. Oh, <laughs> tune. I'm actually crying. Um, tell me, are you going to add anything? Yeah, I'm adding two songs. I'm still in my Afro Swing. Afro hey. Swing era. Afro Swing era. The first song is, let me get you the, okay. Uh, Wretch 3-2, Kojo Funds, Tell Me. Mm. Damn. I was playing it in my car the other day. I was like, this is taking me back. Damn. And Damn. then the second song is uh Jay Silver and Brands, uh Find a Way. Oh my god, like I don't Wait, know. Jay Silver and Jay, uh, uh, Jay Silver and Brands, find a way. I'm oh, gonna know. find a way to live the way. Oh, oh I think I actually know fam, that song. That take, honestly. 
These songs are just taking me back to uni. Just yeah. a carefree time. Damn. Not having a care or, or a damn in the world. Ew. Roaming the streets at 3 a.m. <laughs> trying to find a burger. Going to yeah, McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. In Uber. Another Uber. Fam. Oh fam. my God. I had such a good time at uni. And it just take, takes me back to first year. Just... Yeah. Carefree and everything But yeah I'm so <laughs> Honestly like When our biggest uh, problems Was how we were going to Cut our shirts for bar fest Damn <laughs> What style What style Whoa, What cut Oh my god Crazy <laughs> Crazy Crazy times so long times. ago I'm anyway. so done um, So I'm going to add uh, Is Nine's Pictures in a Frame I was playing it on the way here um, mm. And yeah I just thought oh, Damn It's been a while since I listened to it And love Nine So Yeah I thought I'll add that to the playlist So those songs we're adding to our playlist, guys. Make sure you guys check it out on our Spotify and Apple Music um, playlist. That's BTS Song of the Week. And the link will be in the description box below on the YouTube and also in the descriptions of the episodes in app- on Apple Music and on Spot- Spotify. Yeah. So Apple Podcasts. Yeah, sorry. Um, Apple Music. Oh, sorry. My bad. That's fine. Well. <laughs> it's fine. It's on Apple. Any- yeah, <laughs> for real. It's there. Um, before Ooh, we go yeah. into your thing, now that we're on the oh, yeah, music do. music mm-hmm. topic, bring it in. So, uh, Whiskey had his concert yesterday, and obviously, when you guys see this episode, yeah, it would have been a couple of weeks ago. But there's just been I don't know whether to call it uproar, mm. uproar, mm. disappointment, mm. basically despair. despair. Mm. I don't know about you guys. When you guys saw that Whiskey was doing a stadium tour, like. Did it, I didn't like, react. I didn't react. And I think we touched on it before. Like when it announced, did, I just. But you lot went to the um O2. The O2 2021. Yeah. Last yeah. minute though. Yeah. Was it last minute? Was it last minute? Was yeah, it? I think so. I don't think we actually had t- tickets from the beginning, did we? No, I think we, we knew we were always going. Oh, really? I think we did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we yeah. did. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I I didn't feel any type of way. Like I didn't feel like I needed to be there just yeah. because of the album. I felt like yeah, I like felt he, like when the when it when they announced that and the tickets were on sale, I was just like, oh, maybe I'll go. Like if I was gonna go, I'll get my ticket close to mm. time. But as the time was creeping, I was like, I don't really need to experience this. Mm. And I think what it was as well because Made in Lagos was like, mm. um, I don't know if you guys have seen a TikTok by our friend Manny. Basically, he broke down. He went to concert for free, by the way, and broke down. He went with Koi. I think Koi gave him a, a free okay. ticket. And then um, hmm. basically he broke down like the whole, the whole concert, everything. Can we even, before you even get yeah, onto on. that, can we just talk about the fact that I have never seen Ticketmaster ever release tickets for free before to a concert? Um, huh? In the stadium. Seated. And I think they, and I think there was like two or three drops of the free tickets. Yeah, it's so. crazy. It's sad. I it's got sad. some anyway, Sha. Gave it to Tenny, she went. <laughs> I'm so done. But, but I was going to yeah, say like, crazy. in terms of like, Made in Lagos, like Manny said, like that was like a change in the game in terms of Afrobeat. Mm. Like that album was so good. I remember when I got when I first played the album, I was like, mm, I know, not, I even mm, know where I was when I played it. I was like, mm-hmm. mm, not sure, but then when I played it again, I was like, actually, mm. this album is solid. Good, yeah. So when he came out with that, he was gonna do the concert in the O2. Mm. He had one day sold out, two days sold out, three mm. days sold out. Mm. So everyone was like, they were on this Made in Lagos hype, whatever. Mm. But when you guys went to the concert, what did you actually think of that concert? Well, I think we already actually touched on this. If you guys, I don't even know what episode that would have been. Time but ago. we basically said that, first of all, we were the only people that were really singing. Mm. Like, we were the only people that were really singing. Like, people mm. did not know his Words. songs. People just came for, like, people just new came stuff, for, like, like for, the new what's stuff. That like, maybe song? just, yeah, essence. 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 People just came for that song. Like, no word of a lie. Like, people were not, even like the old throwbacks, like, yes, okay, everybody knows. Um, Don Do, like what, all of that sort of thing. What date did you guys go? Was it? He went on the third, yeah. Okay. Um, and the Thursday he brought out someone, didn't he? Yeah, Chris Brown. That was yeah, that was yeah, it. exactly. Um, and I think that that also gingered some people to buy tickets as well. Because I remember that the way that the concert was was um split up, it wasn't like day after day after day. I think it was I the think first was, two. Then I think it was a weekend. Yeah, then it was a Monday or something. Yeah, it was like mm. the first. I think the first two were back to back, and then yeah, like yeah, the third yeah. date the third was like day, a week because that later. was an added people, day. People, people Do you remember? Like, <laughs> and then you remember like everyone. COVID. Yeah, oh, COVID yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, but yeah, from the actual thing, I mean, like I, you know, everyone says this, and you know, when you're going to whiskey Whiz Kid concert, you're not going for production, you're not going for the theatrics, you're just going to vibe along and sing and have but fun. At the with same your time, I think people did expect something for the stadium. Oh, of no, 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 not for the state. I'm saying for like the O2 mm. that show. Mm. I think people were still expecting. 
I don't know, some form of production in the sense because it's like O2. Mm. I think, okay, Whiskey has performed at the O2 before, but I think this was the first time it was like so solely yeah. just him. Yeah. And it's kind it of Whiskey like... Whiskey Friends before, no? Yeah, Whiskey Dan, yeah, Starboy mm. Fest and all that mm. stuff. But mm. I think this was the first time it was, that was him by himself. But I think people were, I don't know if people were expecting something or whether... People were, people were disappointed. No, I think, it's, I don't know whether people were expecting something or people got there and realized that things were missing. Mm, Do you understand? Like, mm. I don't know whether every you mean yesterday, not no, yesterday, last but I'm saying the, la- the last one because people are like, yeah. oh, like the production, it wasn't really good. Like, all, all, people, all think, people just get so um, sorry. People always forget the artists. Like, artists are different, right? Like, yes, okay, you're going live, you expect to like hear a song, right? But like, for example, with a lot of Afro beats as well, like music. When you talk about actually like singing, singing, like. Not a lot of people can sing, sing. Like, it's a lot of product. It's a lot of like, I think, uh, I th- theatrics before. No, but remember. I think what it is, but I think it's like the whole pizzazz of the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, but do you remember though that what people were really shocked at was actually how poorly he was singing? Yeah, I think Do that's you remember what it was. like the only, when they did a live stream, people people at home were like, yeah, hey, this is uncomfortable right. yeah, yeah, for me I'm to hear. Yeah, secondhand embarrassment. Yeah, yeah like, and I actually that's, remember that's that the, now, that's the fundamental that core. Of any live production is actually hearing the artist sing the song that they <laughs> that they have made, yeah. and you couldn't digest it properly because mm. it was just it was not sinking. I don't know whether there's and to be fair, that people have complained about like normal like O2 problems apparently with sound. Sometimes it's not actually always great and stuff, but regardless, like it was just not pleasant mm. to the ear. Forget about production because you know sometimes you don't need a production like massive. Things, but I'm just I like, I, Obviously I don't want to compare But when we went to Devido last year In terms of like The setup of the stage Yeah Can't lie I was gonna it just was so, say that, that I feel like, like He had like a runway yeah. Kind of it, like, I feel like It was so good this kid like Maybe he needs a stage manager if he doesn't have one already. Like I feel well, like, I think, I think especially the stage like of um, yesterday was good though. The stadium one. Oh yeah, but that's the stadium. I okay, see, I guess, yeah. But um. I was going to say, I feel like when you're a singular artist as well, like when you're not doing it, because again, like yesterday, I don't know what the stage setup was like because I wasn't there and I haven't really watched snaps like that. Um, but when you're by yourself, you have to work the stage. Mm, like you actually yeah. have to, especially when you're in a huge space, like a stadium. And you're, because, and you're not or, lyrically good. Like, yeah, like, or in a we, we went to, because yeah. obviously me and Bitch just went to Beyonce, yeah? Yeah. The, the production... That's of the whole please. thing, I remember it's the same stadium. Yeah. That Tottenham Stadium oh, is yes, massive. Yes, yeah. That's what people like. People, that's what Manny even tweeted as well. Like, it's the fact that he went to Beyonce yeah. to watch. Then he came back to the same stadium oh, and watched that, and it was just like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. So for us, like that place is it has massive. Like it. capacity, I think it's like. 80,000 yeah, seats. 80, I don't understand capacity. why he thought that that was Because obviously right. when you hear O2, you think, okay, three days sold out. Uh, yeah, but yes, six, but three days, you can only have to base. chance it. Well, no, but the, the thing is, it's like, you have to understand your core audience and you have to understand the people that are just there for certain sorts of things. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, but I genuinely think he that doesn't, like, he, he doesn't, thought, I genuinely think Basically, also, that album was just not good enough for him yeah. to have yeah. it. To be honest, I don't, it's not even for me. It's but, not even about the album because regardless, no, but that's really important. Though. No, regardless, I'm telling you now. Yeah, if Beyonce did not did, didn't drop Renaissance, yeah, but she just came and said, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, but she's Beyonce. No, no, no. But I'm saying in terms of like, we haven't seen her for so and so years. Mm. Whiskey is too much in our face. Yeah, made in Lagos. So again, but this is what, what I'm saying Eagle. about this. What I'm he saying had about concert, a free concert yeah, album music. How many yeah, months ago? Yeah, He's true. now come back him. again to yeah, do yeah, to do stadium. That's what I'm saying. To know you, you. Know your, we need to miss you. This take is what I'm break. saying about knowing your core audience, though. Like mm. I feel like that's something that he doesn't. He hasn't grabbed yet. Like mm. it's not about like. Um, hey, the thing, but the oh, thing is, we sold out three times last time. No, but the thing is, one thing about it, yeah. There's no denying that the UK, London. We love Whiskey. Like, mm. he's had his biggest shows in the UK, mm. in London, which is fine. Because we've always been the one that's been like, li- like all his, like in terms of like across, except for Nigeria, the other place in the world that is really receptive to Whiskey is the UK, which is mm. fine. But I'm just saying in terms of like, like you said, the album, like the album wasn't, I personally, I think I listened to the album once and I was just like, yeah, this ain't, I don't think I've this, this ain't for me. But I'm just saying it in terms of like, I just felt like he was, he's just too much here. Yeah, I don't have to say like, we need to miss you. That's why I gave the example of Beyonce because 
Beyonce, the last tour she did was with Jay Z mm. on the run too, which yeah, was like in 2017 or something like that. What I'm saying is, even if she didn't drop an album yet, yeah. but she said she was doing stadium tour, yeah, then it would just make because sense. we haven't seen, seen her, her in yeah. so many years. Yeah. People were like, I don't like. Remember after COVID, everybody was like, ah, we're going there, we're going there, we're, mm. but we, we, Whiskey has all. It's too much here. Yeah. We need you need to go away so we can miss you. Yeah. So when you come back, it'll be fine. Yeah. It's either that or bring out a very good album on the same level level as Made in Lego, so people could be mm. more receptive to it. But mm. child, I don't know. Yeah, man. the one the like just quickly before we move on. But the thing that absolutely finished me was when people said that he said that he's got a surprise, <laughs> a special guest. He, he's he's got a surprise, and then he left, and they were like, it's not, they no, were, it's, no, it's not the fact he didn't just say a surprise, yeah. He said he has a special guest. Did he actually say special guest? I think guest? he said special guest. Oh, I didn't hear that one. I just heard I thought it was a surprise. Was it a surprise? Yeah, it was just a surprise. Please. Yeah, Can't say a special guest. Yeah, it was Surely a surprise. Not. Oh, yeah, it was a surprise. I thought no, it was yeah. special. No, no, it was a surprise. surprise. He said he has a surprise. He went off stage. People were starting to think, oh, who could it be? Oh, could it be uh, this person, this person? Guy came back in a different outfit. <laughs> and the outfit was white. <laughs> What? No, like, literally. no, you can't. Yeah, oh, you can't yeah. do that. Mm. Like, and one thing about the UK, they never forget, boy. Yeah, no, like, they'll be they'll running they'll that joke forget. for a time. Like, for him, he could, he not. Let me not say he could never do a stadium tour again, but it's gonna be a while. Oh, it's gonna be a while. He must have something. Experience has been seriously yeah. humbling. Yeah, he has to like drop and, something. And, and apparently, he. Oh. Sorry, I was just gonna say. Apparently, he was only on for an hour, and like the way, even yeah, like, well. Tenny even said when she got there, and she got there late. Like, by the time she left the house, like, I was just like, yeah, like, are you even going to be able to, you know? Mm. Yeah. But she said and that when she got there, a lot of people were still outside, that the security guys were trying to be like, oh, can people come inside? Because apparently he didn't want to come out until, like, obviously people were in the stadium. Yeah. So he that's came what, out. That's what tends to happen. Mm. Even in the O2, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all these Afrobeats are, but one thing about Tottenham, their curfew is 10 30. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like he left and they were like, oh. So he stopped in the middle of Jorah, is that what you said? Yeah. And like, O2 is like that as well, you know. They don't waste time either. No, 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 no. Recently, you do know you get a fine though. Recently, oh, you get a fine. Because fine. remember recently. when we, sorry, quickly, before um you go on, when we went to David O last time, when he was singing um, Champion, Champion Sound. Sound. Oh, the lights came on. Bro, the lights came yeah, but on. That was, they said, well, but, but, but that was they well after the... 11 o'clock because mm. when I went to Burner Boy O2, I think 2021, that concert finished way after 11 o'clock and the lights didn't turn on. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know whether they're paying fine or they're just allowing them. Yeah, I think them. they do get a fine though, apparently. Like, no, but then at the time. same time, when it was, there was one whisk, one of the Whiskey shows, they put a thing yeah, saying... Yeah, our one finished later than it should have. Yeah, because they, oh, yeah, they put a thing even before we went in. Um, that it would be finishing. That would be finishing later because yeah. um, oh, they're running yeah, behind yeah, time yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But yeah. Shout it's crazy, out. man. But um, yeah, sorry, Wizkid. Hey, yeah. Not sorry, Wizkid. And the thing is, I actually love Wizkid, but I just too, I just wasn't yeah. excited about this tour. And no. No. it's the it's the free tickets for me. Yeah, for sure. Right. And then when you tweet that they're giving out free tickets, people in Nigeria that uh, that, okay, that, that have they haven't even they don't even haven't even smelled the UK are telling you that, oh, what do you know? Mm. If it, like someone even tweeted that, oh, um, the concert, something about something about the concert, and they're like, oh, but the concert was actually okay. Sorry, but you don't, you don't, you live weren't here. Yeah. You, you don't live here. And what your there. standards of concerts? Like, yeah, let's you, not even. Fam, do you know what I mean? The state really stood upright. That, yeah. in your view, yeah. is yeah. an okay yeah, concert. Cannot even compare Bro. UK concert to concert yeah, in Nigeria, yeah. where yeah. they'll have you queue, um, have you waiting there till two a.m. Yeah, I remember when I went to Davido. Davido did not come on stage until two a.m. and the concert finished at four thirty. That's madness. Can you imagine crossing feet at four thirty a.m. in it's Nigeria? So unsafe. Hey, yeah, so I'm getting traffic. Damn. For real, for real. Anyway, for real. it is well, it is well. But anyway, I wanted to discuss something that I saw on Twitter, which actually Have killed we introduced me. the pod. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was done some sure. of the week. Yeah, done everything. Oh, okay. Um, I wanted to talk about something that <laughs> I saw on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and actually, we've spoken on about this briefly when it. I think it was like one. Black History Month and we're talking about like black love and how it's portrayed in the media and all that sort of things, mm. right? So anyway, there's this documentary called Black Love and it's actually by um, Oprah Winfrey's network. 
Okay. And listen to when I'm gonna, I'm just gonna describe what they, you know, the synopsis of what the documentary is, right? <laughs> and it just kills me. I'm already laughing. So it was like by highlighting honest, emotional, and sometimes awkward love stories from the black community, this docu series tries to find secret methods to making a marriage work. Secret. Featured couples include Oscar winner Viola Davis and husband Julius Tendham. Now listen. Hollywood power couple Megan Good and Devon Franklin. Excuse me! I'm still going. I'm still going. I'm still Viola going. Viola was I'm enough. still going. I'm still going. We love you, Viola. Actress model Tia, Tia Marie and husband actor Corey Hardrick. Uh, <laughs> we live in a not together. Who's which one is Tia Marie? So, you know, um, the, sister, sister. Yes, the yeah. twins. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, Mary. But look, this came out ages ago. This came out in 2017. Okay. So old, I'm laughing sorry, because... Sorry, did you give that context? Sorry, sorry. It's an old, <laughs> it's an old docuseries. Old docuseries in 2017. Hey, I was thinking... And I started to read... I started to read the couples that they were saying were I using us. I don't know. Um, a lot of people that you would know like that, like okay, that. The other okay. ones are actually still together. Um, oh, But yeah, my. they were going to say... Hollywood by, what? Fam, Hollywood power, power, power couple. <laughs> And it's like by telling their stories and showing what lifelong love looks like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These Damn. duos, this du- these duos offer proof that while it can happen for anyone, it certainly isn't easy. Now, hmm. Hmm. this is a well, prime um, that age like milk. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it is a prime example of hmm. ah God Can't the struggles. Everybody. When it comes to black love, yes. yeah, Different. is insane. And yeah, anyways, I'm going to play a snippet um, and I want you guys to listen because I was just on Twitter and I was scrolling um, and it was a snippet from this docuseries. And you know, when you hear a story and you're thinking, surely this can't be real. And this can't be the example that you want us to use as a reference oh, point no. for black love. For her and to not <laughs> even summarize, she says she has to play. I have to play it so you guys can who is hear it. Who's speaking? I actually don't know. Who, I don't know. I can't okay. remember who's speaking, but one of the ladies is familiar, but I'll. I'll go, I'll show you afterwards. Anyway, hopefully you guys can hear this. Um, Hold on. <laughs> Let me start again. It's so funny. Started to get on track, but even though we were getting on track that far back, we still weren't healed. And there was still from, from our past brokenness yeah. that we caused in our, in our marriage. You know, so that took time yeah. to really recognize and address because we were notorious for running or burying it under the rug. There was a um a big infidelity in New York um mm-hmm. that took me ten years to heal from. Ten years. Ten years. And we were going through the motions because yeah. with that infidelity, oof, you don't want to wish it on your worst enemy. We had to experience <laughs> don't comment. murder through that. Murder. Um, I, I was held at gunpoint in my own yard and watched the mistresses I was living with at that time killed in front of me. But she had to bear that burden too. Yeah. We we lost our home to arson. Our home was burned that. down. Then um Is this a innocent person was killed rushing to the fire of our house burning down because of our mess. It was hard to get through. And we had we had some counseling and we thought that we were okay when we left New York. Yeah. We thought we were okay because the counseling was intense. Mm-hmm. And then we moved out here and you know swept it under the rug. We swept it under the rug. No, yes. in run. What? Sorry. When I tell you, okay, I am confusion. I'm so confused. <laughs> what were they even talking about? I'm hearing arson. Bro, I'm hearing somebody. He um, said there was murder. He said from that the infidelity. Women, yes, and he said that the his women, own infi- infidelity. Yes. Can you? Imagine? And he said the women that he was doing those things with, yeah. they got killed in front of him. He said that the women have, that he was with, yeah. Hey. In front of him, and his wife had to bear witness to something like that. He mentioned that their house caught on fire, and then somebody was killed as they were running to the fire to try and solve the mess that was going on. And as the story was developing, I just paused and I just said, Is this what black love is about? <laughs> is this the only examples that we have? Get out! Get out! <laughs> No, but wait! <laughs> and that's all we have time for, folks. I swear wait, to God. Man. No, first Damn. of all, you're so wrong. <laughs> the thing is, I think I've seen that clip before. It's an old clip, right? Yeah. 
No, this the is thing crazy. Is, no, but, okay, but the moral of this story is see how men will just come and bring oh, fam, bro. bring problems to your doorstep. I don't I don't understand. Ason. Someone going in and being killed by the Ason. You the, 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 bear witness. Bear witness, witness to the, the to the killings. Bro, of, of all the because he couldn't keep all it. Because in his you pants. can't keep your pants up. Fam. No, honestly. My I dear, can't... go to the mountains and rot. How are... <laughs> go anyway. to the mountains and rot. Because why would you bring that to your doorstep? No, That's legit. I, I don't understand what she's still doing sitting by his right. side. Doing, doing all strong and endurance. This is what I just hate about how black love is depicted in they the media. They want you to struggle. You have to struggle, struggle, I'm struggle. I'm a stick by him. Bro, I'm a stick by I'm a stick by my man. My man, my man, my no, man. That is... Meanwhile, your man, your man, your man is How can... panty. She said it's How you taken survive? 10 years and they're still working. Bro. No. No. That's what I'm saying. No. And you know, people start to give the example of, oh, you know, um, uh, Michelle, she said that she couldn't stand oh. Obama for 10 years and um, all these things, you know, you have to persevere. I'm not sitting here and saying that Marriage relationships are easy. Mm. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say that. But what I am going to sit here and say is that some of you are stupidly sitting in stuff that you have no business sitting in. Like you yourself know that this, I'm only here out of uh, convenience. Mm. Like when you start to do things out of convenience and not based on your. I don't know how to explain it. Like, your actual reasoning, I don't know how to explain that. You actually reason with it and you see this is a correct I think, decision. I think, I think the thing with black love is that it has this stigma that, like, you have to ride it out. Whatever comes your way, you have to be the warrior and start fighting, Bro, fighting anything that comes going your back way. To slavery like, time, like, 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 even the example that Beatrice said, like, awesome. The people that he was sleeping with when I ask, is this Job? Fam. You know how Job lost everything in, 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 like in one night. Fam. Whilst, why, why whilst, have... whilst he was learning that they had slaughtered his sheep, another slave, another yeah. slave came and said, "Oh, they've killed your your children." Whilst the, that slave was even finishing, another one said, "And the house fell down." That yeah. is what this is giving. And no, it's literally. kind of like because our idea of black love is we have to ride it out. We have to stick it out. Yeah. This woman has gone through all of these things mm. saying that, did they say that um, something about they, there was something for 10 years that they were, that she couldn't get, she, she couldn't get over something for 10, 10 years. years. 10 years? 10 years. Oh my days, a decades. We don't even live that long. Years. We need to be like, come on, man. No. Just calm down, I man. genuinely it feel took like... took 10 years to get over something. Bro, my like, yeah. the way she's talking now, she ain't over it, man. She ain't over it. She ain't no. over it, man. Really he probably over. dragged her onto that thing just so no, they could get paid. No, it's the fact that in that example, yeah, that those people have so so much on their head. Yeah, like, the f- because of too one much person's my days, the guilt, she, bro. Because of one person cheating, all that list of stuff had to happen, bro. It's insane. But yeah, when I saw that, I just thought to myself, like, this cannot be the this cannot be the moral compass that we have to now follow. Because, like I said, I listed that all those couples. All, that I list that they that they put in the description. Power, Hollywood power couple. Are mm. they powering anymore? They're, they're hmm. not even together anymore. Are they the together anymore? Gone. Just because I you genuinely see feel on like, the gen. Bam. I genuinely feel like there's nothing wrong necessarily with, you know, seeing a relationship and thinking, oh, like that's beautiful. Like, yeah. In fact, mm. that's where it should stop. Yes. Um, but honestly, you cannot be thinking, I must emulate. What are you emulating? Even like just in our own personal lives, like there's Relationships that we'll see that we're like, oh, you know, this is so beautiful. Blah, blah, blah. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, for you to now try and aspire to be like a celebrity. Yeah. No, nah, sorry. Nah. I genuinely feel like everybody needs to write their own love story. Mm. This whole, like, for me, I've said this before, like, I, and I remember when I said it, like, people, you guys, I don't think you guys agreed with me, but I genuinely do not want to ever have like a proper row with my boyfriend or my husband. Like I get that like there will be times where it's like tough and like you'll have disagreements, blah, blah, blah. But I can't even imagine being in a situation where we're going back and forth and we're shouting and da, da, da. Like, I don't want that. Like, mm. and I get that some people think that like, oh, that's so unattainable, unattainable da, da, da. but that's the story that I want to write for myself. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like that's the standard I want to have for myself. Like yeah. I don't see why I, you should be looking at another celebrity. Oh, 
because Megan Good is good looking and Devin Franklin is good looking, yes, mm. this is what I and they are the Hollywood something kinny mm. huh? mm. I have to admit though, do you know what? I, I'm not gonna sit here and act like a hypocrite because even though I say that like and you're saying and I agree with you, you shouldn't look at couples and be like, oh, like I want this. I can't lie. I definitely do look at aspects and think, wow, like I would love to emulate like something similar because even just as a uh, as an example, this weekend, um, like I meant, oh, I didn't actually mention it, but um, like it was my boyfriend's family's, like they had an event, um, and they were obviously surrounded by like other couples and stuff. My boyfriend was just telling me, oh, there's this couple actually that he knows, and like he actually really like looks up to them in some regards, just in terms of, I know he's not saying that he wants the exact same thing, right? Mm. But like you can still look at something and be like, you know what, this aspect of maybe how they of speak course. to each other. I like that. I want to mm. be able to, you know, put that into my own. Like Sharon said, create your own. Yeah. But you can obviously source inspiration from how from other, other people, people do yeah. it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, you wouldn't want to necessarily be like, I want to be like this couple. Yeah. But the thing is, the thing is, <laughs> the difference between, like, obviously, in that, in the example that you gave, like, mm. these people are attainable. Mm. You can touch the couple. Mm. I cannot touch Jay-Z and um, Beyonce. <laughs> I can't touch them. I can't go and say, oh, I want my marriage to be like this. Mm. All the because first of all, they hard, they don't even really speak about their relationship anyway. Yeah. But it's like you're putting your whole thing of, oh, this is how like things that you you can't even yeah, you're even you're, making up stuff because actually it's actually kind of true, actually. Because even those type of relationships, right? You see something and then you, you perceive it to be okay, this mm, must mean yeah. this must mean how it is behind the scenes. Whereas mm. maybe for a couple where you're actually in you can actually interact with also, them. Interact and with also, them. I think it. with like the example that you just gave, that is again, like Tammy said, the people you can touch them. And I think why it's important to be able to touch them is because then you can actually speak to them. Yeah. Because yeah. then if you're like, there's this something about their relationship that I I admire, find out. and yes. I would love for that to be um, replicated in my yeah. own relationship. You can find out. You can ask questions. Yeah. How did you get to that stage? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Not just going by it. How you in think? Yeah. Watching, like, watching, like, for example, watching like watching documentaries where they've done five takes of the same question <laughs> that yeah. they're asking. To it. Yeah, what, literally. Oh, what did you do? Wait, 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 wait. You've been doing the same takes five over, yeah, over, yeah, over, yeah. over. No, yeah. it's true. Because I feel like it's so easy to like see a relationship and be like, this is exactly what I want. Like, I love how he like spoils her and mm. da, 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 blah blah blah. But, and then you put that unnecessary pressure on, on your, your partner. Own partner. And yes. it's like, you didn't know that before. Like we've yeah. said before, people are not posting on social media when their bank account is in, yeah. uh, in, um, mm, in minus. minus. Yes. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Nobody's doing that. People yeah. are only posting the good stuff. Yeah. And so for you to like ignorantly just think, oh yeah, like he must... Like he, they must be great, and like they've never seen a bad day or a rainy day. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? I just mm. feel like it's just stupid. But yeah. I can't like I can't take my huh Hollywood anything. Like I just feel like Hollywood relationships anyway mm. are just tough because yeah. they have a different level of scrutiny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people too many eyes, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. So I wouldn't even be taking inspiration from that. In just <laughs> no, thank <laughs> you. Um. That's absolutely. I feel like wild. it's a bit tricky though because obviously when we spoke about this before, we were saying that like it is important to have like reputa- representation of black love in the media because other cultures, for example, may or other races, etc. It's the way it's shown. It's kind of hard to relate where for us, like it's more than just our skin tone. It's like so many different things that like we have to carry mm. um, around with us that affects the relationships that we have. Mm. You can't relate. Like, I personally don't, I can't relate to anyone that's not black, like in terms of relationships, just, just me. And even I can delve in further. Not even say, aspects. I mean, like, like general high level, like high level. Yeah. Generally just, okay, cool. But like, the depth, like actually really, really taking like proper valuable stuff. I don't know whether I can, you know, I don't feel like mm. I've ever sat there and seen a couple that's normal. I know what you mean. And been like, I think this can work for me because I always have to caveat that, oh, like, but then with us, we deal with this or but then with us, we yeah. have this and then, oh, mm. but us, we have, do you know what I mean? Like there's just so many different things to play. Mm. Um, But yeah, I, I think it's a bit tricky. Sorry, I think it's a bit tricky where you are wanting to have representation to actually inspire people in some regard because I do think there's a good thing about it. But when, well, one, the Hollywood, like I said, Hollywood characters and all those sort of thing there, yeah, boy, that's, oh, yeah, I call them characters, boy, because it's just make-believe. <laughs> that is another situation in itself. But, um, yeah, I do, I do feel like having some sort of good examples can do some good. Do you guys, because I was just, as you were speaking, I was just thinking... 
Hmm. I don't know if I do. Do you guys have any relationships that you've seen? Like it can be, I was going to say fictional or not. (laughs) What I actually meant was like, it can be celebrities or like in real life that you think to yourself, like, I really love that relationship. Like I would love to emulate aspects of that. Apart from the one that I literally just Just spoke about now. But that's not even yours though. Yeah, it's not even mine. But I I saw, I could see what he was talking about and I would 100% agree with him. But like, not really, you know, not like that. Nah, but I feel like that's because I've already trained myself to not think that way. Because for example, I do like, if you know me, my love language, I feel like it's kind of changed a little bit, but predominantly used to be gifts. So like, if I do see someone being gifted in like a grand way, obviously for me, like I would be, I would see that as a big demonstration of love. And then you'd obviously want to have that, Sort of feeling to yourself Right yeah. But I never use that As an example of Oh yeah Like I want it So I've really trained myself Like Do you know what I mean So it's hard mm. for me To sit here and say Oh um, I don't Yeah I, I would just easily say No I don't find anyone Aspirational Because I've really trained my mind To do all the mm. work beforehand mm. um, But there's definitely Occasions where you would Look at someone and be like Ah oh, That is nice or, mm. But I don't think that's Yeah jealousy Or wanting to Emulate per se What about you? Um, I don't think I have No I just I think for me Maybe There's like We talked about it Just like Some maybe you see like An aspect of something Within the relationship Yeah Mm -hmm. Where you could be like Oh this is nice Like I'm trying to remember One that I saw I think it was Recently I don't know Like I think I think one of the Examples that I saw Is like when Like uh, like we just said, her love language is gift, um, receiving gifts. Mm. But I think sometimes when a partner intentionally gives you something that actually means something, like I remember when Aaliyah J was with her boyfriend, the mm. one, her ex boyfriend, mm. she's like allergic to roses or something. Mm. But like instead of instead of like she she he got her roses. But he wrapped them in in like hundred dollar bills because mm. she's allergic to roses. Like mm. obviously that's not like a I'm not saying that that's like the best example. Mm. But what I'm saying is just like just the thought behind. Yeah, it's more than just. It's more than just the oh here's that like, mm. you're actually thinking about oh I'm the allergic person. to this or you you like this particular thing that's why mm. they got it for you. Mm. Like that example, yeah, he gave her money. But I'm just saying like mm. in 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 response to like just, I don't know, just I like. Like thoughtful, yeah, thoughtful things like that. So when I do see that in like relationships, or like sometimes you see a TikTok, like, oh, he gifted me this because of A, B, and C, and because like it's just well, mm. well thought. That's the kind of that's what I would. That's the kind of things that I would look out for yeah. when yeah. seeing yeah. those things. I, like actually on that, because my love language is words of affirmation. I think the ones that like I'm like, oh, this is beautiful is like people who love their partners out loud. Like mm. Mm. I think that that's always like really nice. And I hope to have that in my relationship. But at the same time, I just think to myself, mm. like you said, like, ciao. Mm. It's so oh, tough because, are, you know, people when they love it out loud and then boy. Mm, ciao, it gets awfully quiet very soon. Very, anyway, very quiet. Um, what I think just on that though, like what I think is so sad is like I feel like I feel like I've started to not believe less in love. That's not true. Oh, I absolutely have. Oh, I have. But I've started to think like, oh, like, I don't even know if this is worth it. Like, I don't even know if like, I don't know. I think I'm like now quite nervous about like being with someone because I'm just like, like, I don't, like everybody I think cheats. For me, like, I'm scared. Mm, I think I'm, for me, I'm not nervous. It's more so that I'm ready for, like, if I'm, Getting into a situation or something that with someone, I'm just I'm just really waiting for, to... for the. I saw your man. No, no, I'm just waiting for like a disappointment to happen. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. my expectations so are so low now mm. that it's so sad because like sometimes you'll be like, oh, he did this or he did that, but most of the time, like it's the bare minimum, mm. and it's kind of like I've lowered my not to say I've lowered my expectations, but. I believe that I have in terms of like, because there's just been like so much disappointment and things like that. Like my expectations are just like so low in, in the sense that I'm just waiting for the the catch, if that makes sense. Like, mm. oh, if something is too good to be true, I'm literally waiting for like the thing that will make mm. it, that will just 
make me realize that, oh, this isn't it. And I think as well, like, I just don't have, I'm at a point where, like, I just have no faith in It's so in sad because you can't get excited. Like, yeah, fam, that's what it is. Like, yeah. you, you'll think to yourself that, oh, like, oh, like, you, you maybe you started talking to someone and you're like, oh, this isn't that. Like, but you can't get too over over excited because no. once you do, that's the time that's, when they'll just, mm, they'll just mess up. Mm, so it's kind of mm. like, like I said, like, I've just lowered my expectations so much, but I feel like I've lowered them so much. It's like anything that someone will do, I just won't be. I'll just be like, okay. okay. Yeah. And it's, it's such sad. Because it's, it's like, but... I would love for like, you know, I would love to like be head over heels and like just be in the clouds. Like, obviously this is not realistic, but like just be in the clouds like forever. Mm. But like genuinely, even if it doesn't happen to me, I think the just knowing that it happens to other people yeah, yeah. makes me nervous that it can happen to me at any time. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. when you're on a roller coaster, but then you heard that the ro- the ride before crashed. Mm. Like you can't even enjoy being on the roller coaster because you're just like, is it gonna crash? Like, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That's how I feel like my the whole mm. love aspects, relationships and stuff. Mm. It's just, yeah, it's just yeah. a lot, man. Do you know what? <laughs> I think from my perspective. I would say I agree with you guys, especially like before I got into my relationship slash maybe like in the beginning stages of the relationship, I had that same perception. But I feel like when you're in in it, yeah, there's like, I don't have to explain it, your mindset changes ever so slightly. And maybe what you desire as Rosie isn't what you previously thought it was. Yeah. Like for me... I've like, you know, I I was of the opinion that having arguments is like wrong. And obviously I would want that for you where you never have to argue with your partner at all, right? But Sorry, I, I didn't say no, that. No, not that, but yeah, I mean, like, proper yeah. major disagreements, right? But for me, I've actually realized, actually, arguing part, and I, don't, I know this might sound weird, but arguing is not actually that bad. I guess what I realized, oh my God, I really love is like when, even in like moments of like frustration or like low moments, having someone that still like cares about like, cares about how you are feeling in that moment and has that desire to want to fix or improve the situation is what for me actually comes now above just tranquility because like those abrupt moments can happen like any moment, but knowing that the person that you're with you can trust them that even in the moments where your guys are maybe going a bit back and forth and stuff, but like they won't leave, they won't ever leave a situation yeah. like without leaving you hanging or like leaving, making you question whether they even care about you or yeah. anything I think like that's that. What I meant as well, like in terms of because I don't think I actually worded what I want, what I said. Because you know how some people be in the comments now, like, like, oh, you're so delusional. I didn't mean like never have an argument. I didn't mean never have a disagreement, even big ones. Mm. What I meant was kind of like what you've described. Like, and I think because I've had this in the past where I would be nervous to come, like come to this person with a difference of opinion Mm. because it then becomes this whole thing where it's like, you're not talking. Um, I end up having to apologize, even Mm. though I'm not really sorry for like, what I said, because that is still like what I believe. Mm. But because of the way that they react, it's like, It's just, it's mad. Mm. And I remember with the last guy that I was talking to, even happened as well, where I like had a difference of opinion, but I didn't want to say it because I just thought like, I don't want to get into an argument. I don't want Mm. this to be a whole thing. And I remember him kind of similar to what you were saying, just being like, you can actually still have a disagreement. Like Mm. we're not going to fight. It's not going to be like this whole big thing where like nobody's speaking, blah, blah, blah. And I think that's basically what I meant. Like I want, I, I want in my relationship to have, like, I don't want there to be rows, basically, like, shouting, mm. door slamming, like, none of that. Like, I want it to be, like, even in times of frustration, still being able to, like, respect the other person's opinion, even mm. if you don't agree. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, very, uh, it's a very uh, difficult thing, I think, anyway, to, yeah, like, to navigate. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think that's basically what we're going to discuss today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, make sure you guys follow us on our socials. That is BTS Pod underscore on Twitter, on Instagram, and on TikTok. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like visuals. That's the BTS Podcast. 
Make sure you guys follow us as well on Apple Music and Spotify. And we always have a poll there. So make sure you respond to that as well. And then we'll kind of discuss the results in a later episode. Uh, But yeah, we hope you guys are appreciating the content. Keep sending in your dilemmas and everything. And we'll aim and hope to respond to every single one of them. Hopefully we'll see Shaq. Um, (laughs) But yeah, appreciate the love, guys. And we'll see you guys in our next episode. Bye. Bye.